Hello guys and welcome back for episode number 35 of Mysteries and Beliefs podcast with John Carter. On today's show, we'll tackle our very first listener question. And I'm joined by my co-host Lisa again today. Hi. Are you excited for our very first listener question? I am. Now, the question that comes to us, I'm not going to say a name because I don't know if they want their name out there. But the question is, what is your feelings, beliefs on Sasquatch and the Skinwalkers? Hmm. Okay. Let's get into it. We've heard about Bigfoot. Stories go back way, way back. Hundreds and thousands of years of sightings of Bigfoot. Here in the United States, we have different names that we call Bigfoot. Bigfoot, Sasquatch, which is a Canadian name also, and the Skunk Ape. Skunk Ape. Skunk Ape is the sightings in Florida Marsh, I believe. Alrighty then. That's the new one on me. Haven't heard of that. Yeah. You haven't heard of that one? I haven't. We watch stuff, but you don't pay attention a lot. Skunk Ape. Skunk Ape. That's interesting. Where'd they get that name from? I think because of their smell. Maybe. okay. (laughs) The Sasquatch or Bigfoot is thought to inhabit dense forests here in our country in the United States. I guess that's where all the sightings, because you've seen some of the documentaries and the TV shows where these people said they've been hiking or hunting and, you know, they run across a Bigfoot and they have a picture of it. I watched it on Scooby-Doo. On Scooby-Doo? They had Bigfoot on... Oh, they did chase Bigfoot one time on Scooby-Doo. They did. Is that what made him popular? It was. Really? For me. What year was that, though? Uh, good question. I don't I'll, I was young. I was a young little whippersnapper. Okay, so 80s or something like 70s or 80s? We'll go with that. Okay, good. Since I'm supposed to be just answering the question... I wasn't going to dig, dig up any information about anything or thank research. Thank you, by the way, to the person that sent in the question. Again, thank you very much for your question. Um, I did do a little bit of research outside of what I already know about Bigfoot and the Sasquatch. Based on a professor of anthropology at Florida University, David Dangling, the legend existed way before we had any names for Bigfoot. The looks and appearance and things differ from region to region. Now, he wrote a book called Bigfoot Exposed. I actually sat down and read a portion of that book. Oh, was it a page turner or what? um, Not really a page turner, but it gave a lot of insight on some of the evidence of Bigfoot. Okay. Okay. So I was interested in looking at that and some of the history of Bigfoot. Now, the most common features of Bigfoot, everybody knows. Six foot to 12 foot tall, a terrible odor. And that's why they probably call him the skunk ape in Florida. I got it. And the sightings of the Bigfoot, again, are always in somewhere dense or mountainous areas. Now, there are different names for Bigfoot across the world. Uh, people in Nepal call them the Yeti, mm. not Yeti, the cooler, Yeti, Yeti. not the cooler, but Yeti. Australia, which I've heard different stories about the Yowies in Australia. In Indonesia, they call them Orang Pendek. Don't know what that means. It's the first time I heard that. Yeah, me too. That's what they call them. I, I don't know what that means. It must be something in their language. Got I didn't it. look that up. The most popular evidence that we've had here in the United States of Bigfoot is the Patterson tape. Do you remember that one? Remind me. That's the one that it was on the news, too, I think a long time ago when they had Bigfoot like walking and swinging his arms and he's looking over his shoulder. Oh, the famous. The famous one. Yeah, the grainy tape is called a Patterson tape. Now, the thing about that, the Patterson tape is. They were out there searching for Bigfoot, but I'm not sure if a lot of people realized the Patterson Gimmel tape. These two were filmmakers. Oh, so it's called Patterson and Gimmel tape because Roger Patterson and Robert or Bob Gimlin, they shot this tape in 1967. They were supposed to be out just looking for evidence of Bigfoot. And all of a sudden, Bigfoot appears. 
How convenient. Very, very convenient. They were horseback riding in a place called Creek Bluff. The creek that bluffs? The creek, and they, they probably did bluff. But this is the beginning of, yeah, I think this is probably one of the beginnings of the Bigfoot craze. Because in 1967, them recording this, and it was actually publicized and researched at some point by scientists. I'm not sure, but just looking at the tape itself, I don't think it's real. Do you remember the reality show we were watching? I believe when we were on vacation in Florida, where they had the, um, they set out to find Bigfoot and they had different noises that they got on yeah. tape. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. Things like that. That wasn't too long ago, right? Maybe 2015, 16. And they had, I don't even know how many episodes, but it was on like the, um, the channel with ghost hunters. I don't, what channel is that? I don't know. Whatever. It was on one of those channels. The travel channels. channel. Okay. I will go with that. And uh, they had evidence of a footprint. Yes. And... And that's another big thing. That goes back uh, way back to the footprints. And then some they did debunk. Yeah. And because they said some people made those footprints themselves. Yeah. But they were like, oh, they couldn't really make those footprints because there's no arch in it. This is flat. This is, you know, bada bing, bada boom. I mean, come Remember on. the guy with the stick with the big foot? Yeah. And mm -hmm. they said that wasn't yeah. real. Kind of like they did with the the things in the cornfield, the how they laid the corn field down with the yeah the crop circles the somebody crop made a crop circle their, overnight their mm -hmm. wooden feet thingy or bobs and that's that's like i said that's why i think this that that tape is not real because you know Bigfoot is supposed to be elusive yeah. okay but all of a sudden he just pops up out of nowhere and people have sightings that they come out of the woods and you see them and the other thing is is the uh, Going to the scientific studies that they did based on this tape is the height, the arm length, and different things about this Bigfoot on the Patterson-Gimlin tape. couple things I can say that there's a disease called Marfan syndrome. Marfan syndrome, the most common or upfront thing that you can say about the Marfan syndrome is their arms past their knees. Similar to the guy on... Um Discovery on Star Trek, the captain. Probably. He's very tall and very skinny and his arms do, they do go past their knees. And that's a sign of Marfan syndrome. So that's one thing that they did talk about. The second thing is the way this thing strides through the brush. What do you mean strides? The, the stride is the way they walked through the brush. Oh, right. And I can tell you, they even said that when they did the research, oh, the foot doesn't go this way, and you have this arch in your foot, the flexion of the foot, and it does this. It's Come on now. If I have a pair of boots on, this is a, a perfect example of this. When we go hunting, my nephew constantly tells me, pick your feet up. Yeah, because, because you slide. Slide, because I have a habit of sliding. He always tells me, pick your feet up. So once I start to do that, I over exaggerate my step. And as we go through the mountains, of course, you have to step higher. Yeah. And my foot goes parallel because I have a pair of damn hunting boots on that does not show any flexion on these boots at all. Right. So and that's one of the evidence that they tried to say, oh, this is why it's real because of flexion of the foot. I pick my foot up. My foot will go parallel to the ground. Just like they said, this foot does. Right. But humans aren't supposed to do that. Right. And just looking at the tape, it looks cheesy right off the bat. It looks very cheesy. Probably every. Uh, every, every encounter. Every. And why is it always grainy? Always grainy. Always just grainy. Just like the UFO sightings. Most of them are grainy. Exactly. I mean, it's the same. And this day and age, with the technology we have as far as video and photo, we, we should get way better pictures of this. Bigfoot should have been caught. Should have been caught a long time ago. I'll get down to that why they should have been caught or there should be some um, evidence of Bigfoot. Now, another thing that I did look at, there was a a gorilla or ape-like creature that existed over 300,000 years ago that went extinct. 
And this was called uh, Gigantopithecus. Okay. This was a giant ape. And they found the mandibles of these things. And they tried to compare them to maybe being a Bigfoot. But this is a known creature that did exist, which was, you know, same features of a giant ape or a giant gorilla. These things weighed from anywhere from 440 pounds to like 600 to 700 pounds. And they were about eight foot to 10 foot tall is what they said they were. There's no fossilized evidence of a Bigfoot. Okay. The only thing that we can go by is the sightings and these videos and these footprints. There's no fossilized evidence. What about the rumor that they live underground? I was going to get to that also. Okay. Now, the thing that they said about the Bigfoot, that they are very elusive. Oh, I I forgot to mention that this, the jaw bones were found as far back as 1935, which was these Gigantopithecus. That exists. Say that five times fast. I know. With this, they're supposed to be very elusive. And if they're elusive, how are so many people seeing them? And another thing is that just looking at some of the research is that there's a possibility of them having some instinct or some sense that they can sense humans around. So just like deer or any other animal, right? If a human gets close and you can sense them. How could you ever see them? How would you be close enough to see them? I've been deer hunting. If a deer sensed you 200, 100 yards away, they look up and see. Right. And this is an open field, but this is dense forest. So what would make them come out of a dense forest just to take a stroll so you can take a picture take of a them? Take a picture, right. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. And they're just like you said moments ago, that there are stories that they could possibly live on the ground. Doesn't matter where they live, but I pause for a second because if they live solely underground, there's no way possible they could come from underground in sunlight. They said that the most appearances of Bigfoot is always at night, but you see some of the evidence or some of the pictures that they're doing the day. So how could they come out during the day if you live underground? Your eyes would only adjust to dark. And if they had fire, then we would see some evidence of fire or smoke coming out of ground because that it would have to be some type of ventilation system in order for them to stay underground with fire. Maybe, maybe we just haven't figured it out yet. I mean, look how the forest is so vast. You don't know. I know that, but that's what I'm saying is, so if they're in dense forest, what would make them come so close to a city or a town? Because there have been sightings of them digging and Make rummaging. Make sure you stay far away. They're the recon. Uh, oh, the recon people? Yeah. Like in the military? Yeah. <laughs> they're set out on a mission to see how close we are. I know. But there have been sightings talking about they saw Bigfoot in a trash can rummaging through it to, to get stuff. And Bigfoot right by the road. Bigfoot right by their, you know, the backyards of their house or something like that. I don't believe any of that. If that's an elusive creature that does not want to be seen, why would you show up in a populated area? What if it's just um, a deformed gorilla? I was going to mention that also about something else, too. Yeah. I mean, what if it is? What if it's a... What I did have here in my notes also is there are creatures out there that are deformed just like humans. So there could be one, two, three, four creatures, maybe hundreds of creatures across this world that are just some deformed ape or some just deformed animal. Yeah. And if they don't develop correctly, this is what you get. I'm going to fast forward for a quick second since you brought that up. I was going to bring this up in the Skinwalker thing. As far as deformed animals, there have been, you've heard of the chupacabra. Yep. The Spanish monster that they, in Spanish countries. There have been sightings of the chupacabra. They hunted the chupacabra. And one day they caught the chupacabra. And you know what it was? What? It was a manged 
box. I did hear that. With no hair. But they also, they come in many forms, depending upon where you're from. Yeah, it, well, it does, just like everything. Because the Bigfoot, our Bigfoot, it's different looks in whichever country that you go to. With the Bigfoot or the Yeti, the Yowie, whatever environment, they'd have to adapt to that environment. Um, and that's the thing about the United States. If they live here in the United States and if they've been around for hundreds and thousands of years, at some point they would have to adapt. If they're a human-like creatures, how could they adapt to cold weather? They have hair, like dogs. Do you, have you seen hairy ass men? Do you think they can go in freezing cold? Nobody the elements? when they jump inside of the ice cold water or during that. Um... But do you think they can survive that for long periods of time? No, but dogs can. Dogs aren't human-like creatures. They're human-esque. We don't know what their DNA is. We do, but we're not vets, so we don't know. <laughs> or whatever they call them, people that, that study. What do they call people that study animals anyway? Minano. Okay. If they haven't had a chance to, I don't think they could have, if they're humanoid creatures, all humanoid creatures going back to the cavemen, the way they stayed alive is they hunted animals and made clothing for warmth until they got fire. And once they got fire, they were able to keep themselves warm. And cavemen had hair too. So if these creatures or the Bigfoot or Sasquatch or whatever you want to call them, there should be some type of footprint of them somewhere. So if they had fire, there should be evidence of fire somewhere, which would make them easy to find. Right. Or why isn't there a bunch of, not a bunch of dead animals all over the place? Why, because they, they'd have to eat something. Why can't they, why can't they adapt? Just like that. Was that you that I was talking about the different, um, the indigenous people? Was that you? Probably wasn't me, but they adapt to the environment, but their body does not adapt to the elements. What I'm saying is, is that they in Siberia, they ended up having their own DNA strand. They're the only people on earth that have that DNA strand, the ones that veered off from like Siberia. And then they went to some parts of Asia or what have you. And they're the only two, like, you know how there's a B they're the only set of people that can make an O positive person. The well, only. And so what I'm saying is, is that we don't know. It could be some other form. Yeah, we don't know um, because there are tribes that are in the rainforest and things like that that has not been discovered. And their DNA would not appear anywhere else because their people have never moved. Sure. And it could be the same tribes of Africa. One or two people could have gone out. That's how they can find the DNA from these tribes. But if the tribe never moved at any point and they're undiscovered, there's no way we would know what their DNA would be. Right. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. but even though that their DNA would differ, the DNA would not adapt them to why, harsh elements. Why, why wouldn't it? it we're not animals. How did, how did we come out of water? How did we begin? We were what, fish? And then we became what? Do you see what I'm saying? I, I, I see what you're saying where you're going there, that we adapted to be able to breathe air. From and, the water. And, and when, we were used to not eating for long periods of time, remember? Yeah, of course. I mean, Things people do like it now. That. That's just fasting. Keto yeah. diet, baby, fasting. Yeah, that's my point. <laughs> no, but, but there have been um, evidence on this earth that there were some type of life forms that can survive without oxygen. Okay. And in the water... They still use oxygen out of the water, fish or whatever, under the water. Sure. And as far as the harsh elements, do you know when it's frozen over top, just like an igloo, it keeps the fish from freezing under the water. Right. And they're scaled so they don't get cold. And they probably don't have the same nerve endings that we have as humans. Okay, but explain this. How do poodles have hair like human, but they're not human? So you don't know what kind of hair they have. That protects them. 
They're poodles and they have human hair. I bet you put a poodle out on the. But they have human like hair. You put a poodle in the frozen tundra, that damn thing would die. <laughs> That's not a joke. It would be gone quick. I'm saying, I'm just saying that we, we honestly, we don't know. Well, first of all, we're talking as if it's real, but if it were, there's different theories. Yeah, there are different theories about everything, but the question was my feeling about what... Do you believe? Do I believe? No. I don't believe there is a such being that's elusive, that's called Bigfoot... Well, they call it Bigfoot Sasquatch or whatever, but I don't believe there is an elusive creature out there that we can't find that is so huge that would leave such a big footprint. And even if they were vegetarians or vegan, they would have to tear down some of those trees and plants and things like that, which we don't find. We don't find every, any evidence of that. Now, going to that, not finding any, any evidence is they're thought to be interdimensional beings. So they can go in and out of dimensions. Hey. That's why we hardly ever see them. All right. There's also thoughts out there that these things are hybrid aliens. So they just come when they recon. come, do their recon and, you know, go about their, about their business. Makes sense. So, I mean, what is it? Okay, but when you were little, like let's say in Boy Scouts and you did camping, did you ever look for Bigfoot? No. No? No. We did. We look for Bigfoot. That's what you do when you go to the woods. Okay, when you were little and you go to Ranger Road Park, did you ever look for him? No, well, never. I think I was a lot younger than you, so that's what we did. Never. When I went no. camping and I go hunting, I look for bears and mountain lions. Well, first of all, you're not allowed to camp. You were not allowed to hunt in Boy Scouts. No, I'm just saying now. I'm and talking when, about when you were little. When I was in Boy Scouts, when we went on our trips, what? I didn't look for Bigfoot. No. No. You didn't look for footprints? Didn't look for footprints. Well, they taught you how to look for bear prints. Bear, bear. fox, and... Um, yeah, because they did... Sometimes we did little moles and to recognize the, the different, different animals. Yeah, yeah, the different animals. But fast forward to, to these days, when I go out into the mountains, I look for bear tracks, yeah, bobcats, that's important. and mountain lions. That's definitely important. I would probably so those, those. what I, I look out for. But Bigfoot... No. One other thing before, because we're talking like forever about Bigfoot, we still have the skinwalkers to get to. Another thing about Bigfoot, if you are eight foot tall, weigh close to 700 pounds, how the hell are you going to be afraid of a goddamn hiker? <laughs> People always say, I think I scared him off. Well, just like bears, they don't come near you they'll run away no they don't come near you yeah but if they hear but you it depends they... on what type of bear go to a grizzly they'll come to you well that's different well depending uh, depending upon what type of noise you make no a grizzly bear they'll track you, you say down. they're naturally inquisitive no not inquisitive your food um black bears they they just the only time garbage. yeah they go through your garbage the only time you have to worry about black bears or some of the brown it's bears the mama is the mama if there's their cubs or something around and, yeah. and that's it. But I'm from Virginia, I know. With the <laughs> with the Bigfoot, come on. Okay, I said one more thing, but this is truly, this is the last thing I'm gonna mention. Do you remember back in the fifties, there was I think it might have been Ringling Brothers where their train derailed and the apes some of the apes disappeared. That. Yeah. And all of a sudden there was a bunch of Bigfoot sightings. No, I don't remember the Bigfoot sightings, but I do remember the... Yeah, there were Bigfoot sightings. Oh, was it? Well, they might be escapees. That's what I think es it is. Escape from what, though? The, the escape, the gorillas escaped. Yeah, it could be. It could be gorillas, you know, mixed with something else. But again, there would be some type of evidence, some fossilized evidence if they've been in, in existence for thousands and thousands of years, or if they're living in certain remote areas that we've already been to and there have been sightings of them, there should be some footprint of their habitats of where they actually live. Well, remember that mammal? I say mammal because I don't know what kind of animal it is, but they just found it in, I want to say, Europe. 
and it had been long been that they said it was extinct, extinct. Mm -hmm. and they found it. There was no evidence of it being alive. But have they had evidence of it before, previously? And then also, yeah, no, they, they had evidence that it lived and then it died. Okay. So How's it like with the dinosaur? And that's what I'm saying. There is no evidence sure, it's of no this evidence, but I'm saying, thing ever existing. I guess what I'm saying is, is that, well, you have people talking about it. So that's not evidence. Uh, well, I take it back. That's I, called let me, hearsay. Let me, let me take it back. I don't know if there was ever any evidence of that particular animal. It was said that is what the article read. All I'm saying is, is that how is everybody from across the world? They see the same thing, the same thing, and they describe it the same. So there's something to it. I'm sure we can explain it. Yeah, we just don't know what it is. I and so I, I gave my explanation moments ago about that that it could be some deformed creature that's across the world. It it could it could be. I mean, you give valid points. I I don't know what to believe. I am along with you though. I think it might be deformed or, or yeah, there's something an that's escaped gorilla. Something that's already <laughs> existed and and I don't know. I don't think it. I, I, there are vast, dense forests out here in this country that things probably have gone undiscovered. If the Bigfoot or Sasquatch lived and they ate meat, they would probably use fire. If they need warmth, they would probably use fire. And those things are easily detected. Have you heard of a raw vegan? Again, there's no evidence of animals being torn apart anywhere all right okay so that's my thought on bigfoot i don't want to dispel anybody's beliefs or their myth of the bigfoot but that's disregard or disregard any beliefs of the bigfoot but tell us what you think that is my belief i don't believe it and let us know what you think on to the crawling of the skins. On to the next. Skinwalkers. With the skinwalkers, that is another elusive creature also. But you're supposed to be afraid of the skinwalkers. Why? Because they'll kill you. I'm not necessarily sure I know what one is. What the skinwalker is, it is a, a person that can transform into a wolf-like beast. Oh, okay. Like the, the natives... Uh... That's exactly where it came from. It yeah. was a Navajo legend yeah. of a shape-shifting entity. Got it. That's I what that familiar. is. It started off really as a curse. So what they did was they cursed a land. Curses. They cursed the land. Did you like how I did that with my fist? Rival tribes, they would curse the land and the skinwalker would get them if they come to their land. Right. So this is where it pretty much started off. Okay. I don't see very much evidence or sightings of the skinwalkers. I've seen like a video where they said this thing is supposed to transform. You see it sitting on a thing kind of like almost like a mountain lion. And then it just kind of morphs into something else. But it was a uh, long distance that they were recording this of thing. Of course, it was long distance. So you don't know what it, what it was. They were like, oh, the way it's running up the mountain, it could not be, you know, this or that. Come on, man. You, you got a video like a thousand, you know, yards away with your little camera. Right. I, I don't know. And I don't see any other videos. I haven't seen any other evidence of the skinwalkers. They go to people's ranches and say, oh, this my cows were torn apart at the middle of the night and this happened and all that. But I mean, again, there's no real concrete evidence of the skinwalkers because if they're shapeshifters, it's a human by day and, you know, a wolf creature or whatever by night. And there's a lot of legends of things like that, that people, perfect example, the wolf man, you know, people turn into werewolves. Like Wolfman Jack? Well, whoa. Of man Jack. P most people probably don't even remember. They the, don't. I'm telling my age. The great radio legend, Wolfman Jack. But what they say about the skinwalkers and how it got mixed up was the skinwalker ranch and their UFO sightings. 
So they kind of combine both of the skinwalkers with UFO sightings. So what we know of today, the skinwalkers, is them two could be hybrid aliens. Everything goes back to aliens. Everything goes back because it's unexplainable. Yeah. That's why. Unidentified. Again, with the day and age of cameras. Where are they at? If I had a farm and my animals are my livelihood. You put cameras out I'm there. I'm putting cameras. We, we put ha- cameras out in the, in the field when you hunt for habitats for deer to see yeah, where they are. That's it. I so would, what? where are the evidence with these cameras? I'm watching it. I, I, I would have to. That's my I, livelihood, and you're tearing up my, you're eating my chickens yeah. and my eggs. Now, I can say the Skinwalker Ranch, they did sell that ranch, and they kind of cut it off similar to what they did to Area 51. The Skinwalker Ranch isn't called the Skinwalker Ranch because Skinwalker sightings. It was just because at one point it was native land. It was a ranch that was owned by a gentleman, Terry Sherman. So Terry Sherman and his wife, Gwen, sold the ranch at one point because of it was a hotspot for paranormal activity on this ranch. So they sold it in in 1996 to a millionaire or billionaire, Robert Bigelow. He bought the ranch for only $200,000 and it is 512 acres on that ranch. Wow. So that's why you can't really see anything on the ranch. If they put a perimeter with security, you can't go on to this ranch. This guy, Robert Bigelow, he's been always into the paranormal. You the guy that makes the tea? Might be. You know, I never looked into that. Probably it's Bigelow tea. I mean, he's a billionaire. And it's spelled exactly like um, Robert Bigelow. Okay, so I'm looking to. Bigelow. Again, he was always into the His paranormal. His teas are being mined by the aliens. <laughs> Sorry. He's, he's been also, always a ufologist, and he's been into the paranormal, well, I guess, forever. Um, he turned a ranch into the National Institute for Discovery Science and Research. Oh, wow. Okay. So he owned the ranch for up until, I think, 2016. But he got a government contract in 2007. So they continue to research on whatever paranormal UFOs or whatever that's been going on. Got paid. But this is a secret contract. There's nothing that you can find on what the contract is. And I think 2016, 2017, he sold the ranch to somebody else. Did they Uh, say? (laughs) <laughs> Robert Bigelow sold the ranch to Arnold Fugel, I believe it's his name. He's another billionaire. They continued different Who research. Make teeth? They continued doing research on, sorry, his name is Brandon Fugel. Got it. I don't know where I got Arnold. I think the security guard that's there is named Arnold. Oh, okay. But he sold the ranch to him. At this point, this was 2016. They continue doing research on the ranch, and I'm not even sure if he owns the ranch because they said it's a, what do they call it, a shell company where you don't really know who owns or who pays for the research that's being done on this ranch. So you really can't track down any contracts or any names or anything like this that's done on this ranch. I'm I'm saying skinwalkers is supposed to be about the skinwalkers, but these are so intimately twined together, the skinwalker and the skinwalker ranch. When I was watching the documentary, I saw something on the skin. I don't even know if I don't believe it was a skinwalker ranch, but it was somewhere close to that. Because, again, a lot of this area and I, I think it was Utah was where the ranch is. There's Native American right. reservations. And on this reservation or this at one point reservation, the gentleman that was doing the documentary, they said, oh, we found something here. And and people said, oh, I get this weird feeling when I go places, just like when people ghost hunt. Right. They always like, oh, my God, I get this feeling in my head and I'm, (laughs) you know, stuff like that. Right. So there were people that claimed they felt something strange in this area and this house that they went to. They said, okay, they dug up. They, there was some type of cave underground. So they went underground and they came back. The guy who was doing the documentary actually got sick. So he did feel weird and he got sick. I was about to say, what kind of sick? And you're like, oh shit, you know, it's, it's some validity to the stories that they have. <laughs> but they, one they went back to test what was going on down there. Yeah. High levels of radiation. Oh, he got that? radiation poison and burns from wow. it. 
So that's what these people were feeling. They were feeling these high levels of radiation in this house and around this area. Nice. So that kind of dispels the myth because some of the myths that we have, you can dispel with science. Sure. Just investigating it. Yeah. And with the skinwalker, there's no evidence of skinwalkers. On Ghost Files, the psychic medium, she says they're skinwalkers. Again, that is <laughs> that is hearsay. You Listen, have to come up with tangible she evidence. She has a, uh, what do you call it? The person that draws the pictures? Sorry, that's hearsay. Listen, you, you don't know. She's credible. She's found some stuff out. These houses. I mean, Always on luck a reservation. Of the draw. I Always. mean, I can keep flipping a coin. At some point, if I call heads, it's going to be heads. I enjoy the show. So. <laughs> I like it, too. So we, we like all paranormal shows, pretty much, as long as it's not super cheesy. Yeah. The skin markers, again, is it the case that there are UFOs coming? These skin walkers are some type of alien creature? Or it could be because of the storyteller. Yes. And that's what they all the, are, stories. The story, meaning if I tell you I saw a car and he was raging down the street, really it meant that the speed limit was 40. He was going like 45. Yeah. Do you, do you see what I mean? It, it could be something like that. Yeah, Not exaggerated like a, story. Yeah. Or it could be like how M. Night Shyamalan took a play on that whole thing with oh, that guy. Come on. What was the one... <laughs> I know we both feel the same way, but what's the movie where the guy had split personalities? Split. Was it called Split? <laughs> it was called Split. And then, but you knew at the end where he said he's coming or he, that's where I think he got that from. Something similar to that, yeah. where he became this big, he was human, but only he wasn't. And then, Yeah. And I mean, that's mind over matter. I mean, he really didn't transform. He just kind of got strong. He, he did he got, some. He, but he was super strong. Remember, he was, like, he was breaking through things. And yeah. I mean, mind over matter type deal. But and didn't his teeth change? I don't know. <laughs> Remember, like all kinds <laughs> I, of things change. Yeah, some things changed on him. But I mean, you can. His muscles pop out. yourself to do this or make yourself That's look what I'm like saying. That. Like other people, Miss May down the street might say one thing. And I would say. He just left the gym. Of course, he's going to be bummed. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Um, he is swole. <laughs> one, one more thing that I want to say about the skinwalkers. The myth, again, came from the Navajo Indians. It was because of rival Not to tribes. Not confused with Slapaho. Sorry. It was because of the beefs that they had with rival tribes that these skinwalkers came to exist if you've watched, I know you've got to watch some, you know, cowboys and Indian movies or just some movies in general when they would take a wolf and they would put, you know, the wolf's head on. This is what they could have did. They could have did exactly that. They, they could have some wares as a reward. They wore their. Yeah. But what they could have done was they could have had some warriors. I mean, some some warriors that kick ass. Yeah. That put some, you know, the wolf stuff on, you know, the the garb <laughs> and go out there and beat the shit out of some of these other people. And then you'd be like, man, did you see that? No, nah, I ain't going over there. Man, they got this thing. They call the skinwalker. This dude, I saw him turn into a wolf. When I saw him the first time, he didn't have that on. But now he looks like a wolf. He put on for real a uh, wolf. Uh, yeah. And then they did. Wolf you can, skin. You can pull it up. They put on wolf no, skin. No, I know. I'm familiar. So is this is probably where this myth came from, that somebody may have done it one time and went out there and whooped a bunch of ass. And then they said, oh, they got something over there. Mm -hmm. So we're not going on <laughs> that land anymore I because agree. that land is cursed. And I think that's exactly where that skinwalker myth came from. I agree. I I agree with that. So, that's, so but do you do, so? The uh, with both stories, the consensus is that you both stories. I just think they're just tales, myths. Yeah, and I think a lot of it can be debunked with science. If they find some evidence of a Bigfoot, 
then some of it could be debunked by science, by DNA evidence. If they captured a creature like that, if they studied it, it could be like, oh my God, it is a deformed XYZ. This, you know, ape or whatever got has Marfan syndrome. How could it get Question. that, you know? What about the food, the documentary that we were watching or the reality show where they said typically this is the Bigfoot's diet here in this region and they had like, for lack of a better term, kibble for the... No. And it was just all grouped together. Do you remember that? Yeah, I and, remember that. And the droppings. Yeah, they, even, Can you imagine? Still, even still. Even still. they. I'm just not looking if for they, If they poop. found droppings... That would be all over the news because you could get DNA. You can get exact diet. Sure. I think they even, did they take it in? I don't know. When they do research or they do documentaries and things like that, they pull every type of scenario and evidence and everything that they can to put together this documentary. Right. A lot of documentaries is hearsay of sightings. Unless you have credible evidence, which these pictures, blurry pictures, aren't credible evidence. Right. Grainy pictures and videos aren't credible evidence. You need some substantial evidence to prove that this exists. So the same thing with the skinwalker. You have to have some substantial evidence that this thing exists. Right. These things weren't only on the skinwalker ranch. Right. So where are the sightings of them now? I don't know. I got to go to TikTok. They may know. They know yeah. everything on there. And it's hard to believe things um, these days because this age of technology that we have. I mean, I could make, I can't do it myself, but if I learned, I could make a movie on my laptop of you, some type of alien or some type of creature or whatever. You know what I mean? So, like I said, you have to have some concrete evidence that these things exist. Again, it's the unknown. It's the unknown. Well, you know, we'd love to hear what you think about the skinwalkers as well. Yes. Thank you for my expose on the Sasquatch, Bigfoot, the skinwalker. And that's my... The stories, nonetheless, are very interesting to watch. Yeah, I'll watch they are. them each time. So. Entertainment. For sure. I like the what ifs. Yeah, I do too. That's why we do this podcast because it's the what if, it's Thank the mystery of that things. that inspired the show. Thank you very much again for that question, just like she said. And if you guys have any other questions out there you'd like to answer or you'd like us to answer, or if you have a story you'd like to share with us on the show, email it to John Carter at mysteries and beliefs podcast.com. Join us on Facebook and Instagram. Instagram. Until next time, peace. Ciao, ciao.